Uh, today, the main objective of my presentation is to, uh, to see if we can use lipid nanoparticles uh, as a lipid carrier of nucleic acids uh, for the treatment of COVID-19 or uh, respiratory infections uh, such as uh, influenza. So, uh, so instead of using live viruses, uh, we have uh, used, uh, we have put reporter genes such as uh, GFP or luciferase in several lipid nanoparticle formulations and uh, to see which one has the best transfection efficiencies in cell lines, and as well as in mice, uh, whether it can reach into the nasal cavity or the lung structures. So once we have identified the lead LMP formulation, we will put in siRNA to knock down the reporter genes and uh, as a proof of concept. So we're still faced with the pandemic for one and a half years. The SARS-CoV-2 virus, it's the main uh, virus causing the COVID-19 disease. It has infected more than 146 million people globally with 3.1 million deaths. So the exact mechanism by which the SARS virus infects the host is through a receptor called angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, which is highly expressed in our nasal cavity, as well as in the lung structures to uh, varying extents. So after virus binds and enters the host, the RNA genome is released into the cytoplasm, followed by protein translations and viral packagings, and leads to subsequent infections, and uh, the worst situation can lead to deaths. However, uh, there has been um, companies uh, uh, creating uh, COVID-19 vaccines that have already been rolled out and very successful. Uh, for example, Pfizer and Moderna have used the lipid nanoparticle technologies where they encapsulated the SARS-CoV-2 spike mRNA when injected in the, through intramuscular injections. Uh, our body uh, produces antibodies against this by neutralizing the virus and thereby reducing the severe cases. However, vaccines only uh, prevent diseases in healthy or more or less healthy individuals. What we wanted to do is uh, to be able to treat those that are infected so by using LMP technologies encapsulating siRNA against RNA viruses. So there are many viruses that could also infect the lungs. That includes influenza A, RSV, and the present coronaviruses. The general composition of the LMP uh, is that it contains cationic lipid 50% uh, at pKa of 6.5. So when at low pH, it's positively charged that can bind to the messenger RNA or siRNA. The cholesterol is responsible for the fluid, fluidity of the membranes, while the structural lipids is also an important component that accounts for 10%, uh, which uh, is important for encapsulation of the nucleic acids. And finally, PEG lipid accounts for 1.5%, uh, which is uh, responsible for controlling size. So we're really fortunate to, to collaborate with the UBC group uh, led by Dr. Peter Collis, Dominic J. Karen, and the, the Collis Lab. So they helped to formulate these particles by, uh, by putting together phospholipids and nucleic acids through a rapid T-junction mixing uh, mechanisms to produce particle uh, less than 100 nanometers in size. So in essence, for our in vitro studies, we are putting in reporter genes, GFP, mRNA, is modified at the 5-methyluridine, or the, or the actual SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid uh, portion of the virus infusion with GFP. And this is unmodified to resemble the original nature of the virus, plus the scrambled or the GFP siRNA to knock down our reporter gene as a proof of concept. For our in vivo studies, we will be putting in luciferase. Uh, this is also modified at the 5 methyluridine We will deliver in, intravenously in mice as a as a positive control to show that LMP is uh, 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 biologically active, followed by intranasal administration in mice to see if we can label the respiratory mucosa. So in this uh, table, we're showing the physical properties of six different formulations of LMPs. So with similar molar compositions of lipids as the recently approved uh, on petrol formulations as a benchmark. We're, what we're changing is, is the helper lipids. So we're choosing six different ones, which uh, reflect the, the range of the lipids that can uh, 
control, uh, charge distributions, and also membrane fluidity. So using dynamic light scattering procedures, we showed that the hydrodynamic size is well uh, less than 100 nanometers, and size distribution closer to zero as opposed to one, which suggests that they are homogeneous in size. So the next table is the in vitro studies. So this was done in collaboration with St. Paul's Hospital, a heart lung innovation led by Dr. Don Sin and the collaborator Del Dershai for pro providing the immortalized human airway epithelial cell lines, as well as Gabriel, uh, Beth, and Bashak for the assistance in flow cytometry. So in essence, this slide shows that formulation number six, when encapsulated with GFP mRNA, results in the, the highest uh, transfection efficiencies uh, evaluated by percent GFP. And this is also the mean fluorescent, median fluorescence intensity. Uh, strikingly, the lipid uptake was also uh, very high uh, for the LMP formulations. So we have ranked in terms of the ability of transfection and lipid uptake for subsequent siRNA studies. So this study um, is using the human airway epithelial cell line. So we did a 24-hour pretreatment of the siRNA and then followed by another 24-hour treatment with the uh, siRNA plus the, the GFP mRNA or the, the long nuclear capsid GFP fusion. So what I'm showing you here is comparing the transfection efficiency between a, a traditional LiPo 3000 carrier as opposed to our LMP formulation number six. So there are two important points. The first one is the transfection efficiency. So for the LMP 3000, so the LiPo 3000, we can achieve about 20,000 uh, fluorescence units, whereas the LMP number six can increase by tenfold of the transfection in cells. And likewise, the, the knockdown efficiency was much more superior, more than 80% as compared to less than 40% in the LiPo 3000. So similarly, if when we were to deliver the nuclear capsid fusion with GFP, which is a longer uh, version of the genes, and it's also unmodified to resemble the original nature. It's not surprising that we see the signal is much lower. However, Using LMP6, we can bump up the signals quite dramatically, as well as the knockdown efficiencies. So next, we, want, we wanted to see if our LMP formulations can be translated in vivo. So this, this uh, study was done in collaboration with BC Children Hospital, led by Dr. James Lim, uh, Gregory Reed for pro providing the uh, imaging systems and also the animals, and also as well as Vicky for uh, her assistance in intravenous injections. So just to recap that our in vitro screening uh, procedures, that LMP6 was the best in vitro. For the in vivo, LMP6 was actually the, the least effective. That could be due to the environment by which the LMP is bathed in that results in the differences. But you can see that LMP5 has the highest transfection compared to other formulations. But over time, 24 hours post the signal reduces and that is expected. As we all know, the mechanisms by which the LMP enters the hepatocytes uh, is through the APOE LDL receptors present on the hepatocytes for entry. So what about the intranasal deliveries? Can LMP enter the nasal cavity and also the, the rest of the lung structures? So based on these images, yes, they can, but to different extents, as you can see, the y-axis represents the total emission the signal of the vociferase in the nasal cavity versus the lung structures, four hours versus 24 hours post uh, intranasal delivery. So the mice were anesthetized and they're allowed to inhale 50 microliters of LMPs. You can see that the nasal, in terms of the uh, transmission efficiency for nasal cavity, LMP2 seems to be the, the, the winner. However, for the lung structures, LMP formulation one and six seems to be the, uh, uh, the, the more, uh, the better LMP formulations for infections. And it's fairly consistent uh, throughout the 24 hour time point. So for summary, so the delivery of mRNA using LMP is more superior than lipofectinine in vitro. 
And we also showed that LMP can enable delivery of the RNA payload in vitro and also in vivo in liver, nasal cavity, and lung structures. But more importantly, we actually showed that that depends on the, uh, the helper lipids. The LMP number six works the best in vitro, but LMP6 actually works the best in nasal cavity, whereas LMP1 and I believe also 6 worked the best in lungs. So in essence, direct comparisons of the LMPs uh, uh, for in vitro and in vivo delivery mediated by the LMPs revealed very weak correlations. And the reason is possibly that LMPs are tissue and environment specific and therefore requires uh, optimizations uh, for efficient gene deliveries. So thank you very much for attention. And I wanted to acknowledge the groups, uh, the BC group and call on the BC children for their support. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for that talk. I, um, I'm very impressed that you're working uh, both in the academic context, but also with teams um, in, involved in direct patient care. So doing clinical research as a clinician scientist. My question to you is, um, what are the challenges in working across these boundaries? And um, where do you see yourself going in your career in terms of now you've had this exposure to um, clin clinician scientist type of research? So I'd be interested to know how this is uh, affecting your plans for the future. Right, thank you very much, Diane. Yeah. Um, so, so in terms of uh, the, the training from, so I originated from the academic field, so working at St. Paul's uh, for my PhD studies. So, you know, as you know that uh, in academia, like uh, each, uh, you know, student would have their own projects. So that means they're relatively more independent in terms of troubleshootings. Of course, we have meetings and that would be value during that process was the, the independent, uh, you know, training processes, troubleshooting, you know, looking, uh, looking at PubMed uh, publications and really to have a, a good, strong uh, foundations and which actually made it much more easy for me uh, to transition into industry because uh, the, the, the workflow is uh, fairly different and we have to work with the um, team members, and I really value the teams because, uh, for example, in our, my situations, uh, there's a group uh, producing the LMPs, they characterized it, and they, it's like a, a pipeline which kind of brings it to, to, to my individual studies analysis, and it's, it's really exciting. It's really, really exciting that uh, we can see the progression and the evolution of the LMPs in terms of the future. Scientific careers. I really see myself in uh, the, the industry uh, realms, but I also value the collaborations with academic labs because um, some are actually um, science uh, clinician scientists. They are medical doctors, which can also provide sample uh, data, sample tissues, which are really important uh, for this uh, for pushing out potential products such as LMP uh, in the in the LMP space. So it's really rewarding for me. Excellent. And so it's clearly given you a real insight into the, uh, the customers that you have ultimately for the product that your company is preparing. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Excellent. Terrific.